Now our third interview today is with Jerry Canellis. He's the CEO of Emiran. Let's go to that interview. Jerry, thanks for being with us today. Nice to be here, Dave. Now, you're developing uh, immunotherapies for gut-related, gut-mediated diseases. Tell us about your platform and where you're at. Yeah, sure, Dave. Emuron is a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company focused on two therapeutic areas of interest, one being inflammatory-mediated diseases and the second being anti-infectious diseases. Our products are designed to be orally active. They're um, derived from hyperimmune bovine colostrum, and the products basically work in the gut and focus on targeting bacteria that live and do all the damage in the gut. Immuron has a validated technology platform with one asset generating increasing revenues and we have two clinical assets um, in development at the moment. One is focused on fatty liver disease and the second is targeting one of the hospital superbugs, Clostridium difficile infection. Now, Wall Street analysts cover your stock. Uh, H.C. Wainwright has a $20 target on the stock. What's the essential value proposition for investors today? Why should they consider owning Emuron today? Well, if you look at our current share price, it's uh, hovering around about $10. And Emuron has a marketed product targeting uh, traveler's diary, which in this country is about $100 million market opportunity. We also have two clinical assets, one focused on inflammatory mediated diseases, fatty liver, and the other focused on one of the hospital superbugs, Clostridium difficile infection. If you look at the inflammatory, the fatty liver space, that's a $40 billion market opportunity with a huge unmet medical need. And Clostridium difficile is globally a $10 billion market opportunity. So the product you treat that treats travelers' diarrhea, and it makes you unique in a lot of early stage biotech and that you actually have revenues. Tell us a little bit more about that product, the revenue growth, and what you expect from that. Yeah, sure. Traveland was registered in Australia. It's a listed medicine on the Therapeutic Goods Administration. Uh, the product is indicated as being able to reduce the risk of contracting traveller's diarrhoea. And uh, it is also licensed in Canada. Because of the excellent safety profile of our product, which is a technology platform, which is generally regarded as safe by the FDA, we can actually market the product as a dietary supplement in the US. And we're experiencing some significant growth in the US. We made last financial year $700,000. Uh, in sales, and we're projecting that to increase to over a million dollars this year in the US alone. Okay. Overall, we made about $2 million on the sales. And you have a collaboration with the US Department of Defense. Uh, talk to us about that collaboration. Yeah, sure. The uh, US Department of Defense have been researching enteric diseases for over 20 years without any success. Um, our product is the only product on the market that actually targets bacteria in the gut, where they live, where they do all the damage. And it really has uh, grabbed the attention of the uh, US Department of Defense. They've spent considerable amount of time characterising the product. And what they found in a study that we announced in January this year, that the antibodies in Traveland actually cross-react with a number of other bacteria which are significant interests mm. to the DOD, one being Shigella and the other being Campylobacter. Mm -hmm. So a very large uh, market opportunity potentially with the U.S. Department of Defense and all of their employees and soldiers and everything else. Definitely, and it is a product on the market that prevents traveler's diarrhea. The findings that were reported in January open up uh, another market, which is Shigella. Shigella is a particular nasty bacteria. It's more severe than getting the um, Montezuma's revenge. Let's go back to the clinical trials. You have multiple clinical trials. Uh, what are some of the key milestones that uh, investors might see over the next 12 months? Yeah, sure. We have one asset, which is focused on fatty liver, and we have currently three studies ongoing. The company just completed a sponsored study in non-alcoholic steta hepatitis. Uh, we ended up that was a phase two study, correct? Yeah, they're all phase two, um, all 
under an IND approved by the FDA. So we ended up recruiting about 133 patients mm -hmm. in that study and uh, it was conducted over multiple sites uh, around the world, 19 sites in the US, uh, five sites in Australia and two sites in Israel. And as you're aware, we reported our top line results in March. And on the back of that announcement, we uh, raised four million US uh, dollars to support the development efforts of the company. So cash position, you're strong, you're in a good place. We are in a very good place. I have uh, a long runway to run operations for the next 12 to 18 months. In terms of the clinical portfolio, we also have two NIH-funded studies, uh, one focused on alcoholic steatohepatitis, which is the alcohol version of NASH. And currently we have 56 patients in that study and have just closed uh, recruitment. And we hope to see the last patient last visit happen in December, which means we'll be reporting data in Q1 next year for that study. We also have a paediatric non-alcoholic fatty liver study ongoing. Um, our principal investigator is Miriam Voss and currently we're at the 50% mark in the recruitment. We have 19 out of 40 um, kids already recruited in that study and we anticipate to complete that study by the end of this year and reporting data probably Q2 next year. And our second clinical asset focuses on Clostridium difficile and we have six out of 60 patients recruited in that study and uh, hope to be reporting uh, results probably mid next year. So multiple milestones, I'll, I'll simply note, I think one of the reasons that Wainwright gives the stock a $20 target is because companies that have completed or in phase two clinical trials for things like fatty liver disease, NASH, have much higher market cap multiples. So what we hope is eventually that uh, your market cap will catch up with what you actually have. And then again, you've got other, other trials going on, a lot of data points coming up. So it could be a very positive year for you. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's the upside for anyone wanting to invest in Imuron. If you look at the major players in the fatty liver space, they're multi-billion dollar market. And we'll cap. show some of those up on the screen there and you see we can see a comparison. Okay. And again, the company's looking at Clostridium difficile. Again, they've got 400 plus million dollar market cap and Imuron offers you a validated technology platform a product generating increasing revenue and we have two clinical assets one focused on fatty liver and the other focused on one of the hospital superbugs clostridium difficile and, and again very strong uh, cash position what's the insider ownership on the stock do you know offhand uh, currently uh, we have our top 20 investors own about 42 percent of the company we listed on the nasdaq in june last year and about 10 percent of our stock trades on the nasdaq okay very good jerry thank you so much for being with us today Thanks. wonderful story it's a pleasure being here now to get more information about Imuron, visit imrninfo.com. See research reports, fact sheets, presentations, and the latest videos. It's all free and you can even subscribe to email alerts to stay on top of the latest news.